Hi, I'm Rob, Global Service Manager at Gripnail. Today I'll be showing you how to replace the single acting load cylinder on a 7005 RF with the new double acting cylinder, which now comes standard on all our new line of high speed pinners. This is an upgrade to the load delivery system. By replacing the single acting cylinder, which relies on air out spring return with the new double acting cylinder, which is air out and air in. This makes the return process significantly faster by using the same PSI air out as the single acting cylinder, but now will return with the same pressure. Not relying on the spring tension anymore ensures the consistency and reduces the risk of component collision possible with the single acting cylinder when the springs lag. First, I'll cover what components that are needed to complete this upgrade. Then I'll show you what tools you will need as I prepare for the assembly of the new cylinder. You will need the following parts, which will also be written in the description of the video below. 144295 load cylinder, 246209 elbow fittings, 3 feet of 48025 quarter inch tubing. Let's jump right in and get started with some prep work before we move out to the shop where we will remove the old cylinder and install the new one. Last but not least, we will align all the components on your machine to their factory state and finish by tightening all the nuts, bolts, and screws to make sure the machine runs like it should because grip nail machines are the workhorse of your shop. The tools needed for the whole upgrade are these tools right here. An adjustable wrench, a 7 16 open end wrench, two Allen wrenches, a 3 16 the larger one, and the smaller one is a 332, and something to cut your tubing with. Uh, we're not going to need the tubing right now. There will be two fittings you need for this, but for this part we're only going to show the one uh, because the other fitting is going to go onto your, uh, your load uh, Mac valve. So this right here is your 44257 cylinder that's on your machine now. Air fitting on the back, transfer block and jam nut, hexagon shaft, air out, spring return. So we're going to need to take these components off so we can put them onto your new cylinder. Want to loosen up on the jam nut. this off. Block, jam nut, spin that off. And then uh, the air fitting out of the back that will be tight and to take that off. Now that's your old load cylinder. We'll put that off to the side because we won't need that anymore. This is your new cylinder. And you can see it looks a little bit different. There's a shoulder on the front and a place where an air fitting will go and an air fitting in the back. Heck, it's got a uh, square shaft. You see it doesn't return. It's going to be air out and air in. So we're going to take our jam nut, run that all the way down to the bottom of the threads. Take our transfer block, spin that on. To line up these fittings, but we're going to put our air fittings on, which these air fittings come with their own sealing on them. So we're going to tighten up on those fittings, not too tight, just get them tight enough so they won't leak. Now, orientating this, you want to do it 
from the front, looking at it this way would be the left, but from the back for this purposes of this film, we're gonna show you from this side. So you want your air fitting pointing up to the right. So, uh, and you want this slightly pointing down this fitting. So it gives you room to adjust this in and it won't hit your uh, bracket, your mounting bracket. So you wanna get that aligned to the proper location Square this up, hold your transfer block, tighten your jam nut up. So that's how you want it to look and of course you can see you want this slightly facing down that'll give you more room for alignment up to the track when we put this on out in the shop. So that is that part that is on there and ready to go. Before starting work on your machine, you want to make sure you turn the machine off, then lock out tag out, and disconnect the air pressure. You'd want to remove the pins out of the track by pushing them up the track and placing them back in the feeder bowl. This will make it easier to work on the load cylinder without the pins in the track. Then you want to pull the load cylinder forward just to make sure that there's no pins left in the bottom of the track. To begin work on your machine, you need to take off the load cylinder cover. To take the cover off, you have to back off the two thumb bolts. Then you'll need to move to the other side of the machine and undo the wing nut. Then the cover can be removed. The next step is removing the load cylinder that is presently on the machine. You want to take the plug out of the proc sensor which is keyed when you put it back together. It's orientated. Then you want to back off the proc sensor which will be adjusted into the new load sensor when that is installed. Next, the air hose will come out of the back of the fitting of the cylinder by pushing down on the collar and pulling out. Then, you can remove the Allen head cap screws, which are going through the mounting block. This mounting block will be reused with the new cylinder. This is the old cylinder which is air out and spring return. The transfer block on the end of the cylinder will be reused with the jam nut. Now we want to mount the new double acting cylinder onto the drive head bracket. You want to use your allen head cap screws and place them through the mounting block that have recesses in the block. Then place the cylinder in the mount and place the top of the mount over the cylinder. Now the screws can be tightened to the drive head bracket, but just lightly tightened so the space in the block is even on this side because we still have to adjust the cylinder. Now we can take the air hose and place it in the rear fitting by just pushing in. Then you can use the cap to the proc sensor 
and screw that to the sensor. And again, it is orientated. Now you can adjust the proc sensor down to the load cylinder. It should be about a sixteenth to an eighth inch away, so it will detect the block in the retracted position. This is when we can align the transfer block with the track. You notice that the shoulder on the transfer block is even with the back of the slot that the pins will come down. Again, just lightly tighten the block. The block should not make hard contact with the track. Now you can put some pins in the track and manually bring the transfer block out to make sure that the pins are being placed perfectly in the center of the upper weld tip. This shows perfect pin placement. This is when we can align the transfer block from side to side. There is notches on each side of the transfer block which recess into the track. There is play in the screws of the mounting block so the load cylinder can be moved from left to right. You want the transfer block positioned in the center of the track recess. Now we are going to attach the air fitting elbow to the load valve. We can remove the screws from the load valve. This will allow us to gain access to the plug in the top port of the load valve. Remove the plug. The plug will not be used. Now we can take the air fitting elbow and attach that to the port of the load valve. These fittings come with air sealant already on them. Orientate the air fitting so it's pointing out. Now the load valve can be reattached to the bracket. Feed the hose through the frame to the load cylinder. Place the hose into the front fitting of the load cylinder. Then route the hose through the frame to the top of the machine, leaving a little play at the bottom. Now you can route the hose to the load valve. Cut the hose so there's a slight amount of play in the hose. Now place the hose into the fitting of the load valve.
Lastly, the load cylinder cover can be installed. Start with the washer and the wing nut. Then on the other side is the two thumb bolts. And tighten them, not forgetting the washers. This completes the installation of your new double acting load cylinder. Your machine just got faster and more reliable. Hope you enjoy your upgrade.